everyone, welcome back to another PNSO review. Today we're taking a look at their latest take on Triceratops, Doyle 2.0. This figure is part of PNSO's Dinosaur Museum line, which means it comes with that $60 price point that we all know and fear. I ended up ordering this figure from PNSO's AliExpress storefront. I found it to be much more cost efficient to order it from their AliExpress store versus their Amazon storefront. It's free shipping on AliExpress from them. If you order it from their Amazon store, you will be charged shipping. It's usually $10 to $15 until, you know, a few weeks later or a couple months later when these are actually available at an Amazon warehouse, which if you have Prime, it'll be free shipping. But if you want to save yourself a few bucks, definitely order it from their AliExpress store. So let's take a quick look at the packaging really quick before we take a closer look at Doyle. You got a picture of Doyle on the front along with the uh, replica of the Triceratops skull on the side of the box. PNSO Dinosaur Museum, 135 scientific art model, nothing really important on the back or on the side. But guess what comes inside the box? You know, the, all the treats that PNSO has been giving us lately to justify that $60 price point. If you guessed a crap ton of posters, you are correct. And we get a you know educational pamphlet. I am not gonna hang up the posters again like I did with the Iguanodon review. There's 24 posters with this set. And uh, it was a chore hanging them up and it snowed here this morning and I'm tired from shoveling so I'm not gonna do it. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna open up this booklet and there is pictures of all the posters that you get in here so you can get a rough idea of what's inside this envelope na, 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 triceratops lots of triceratops and this one and guess what there's a second page and we got more triceratops uh inside this envelope these i mean the, the artwork is great it's nice to have these but like majority of us that order these figures it's gonna stay in the envelope and that's why i'm not wasting my time uh opening these up to show them off because i'm just gonna open them up show you guys quick and put them back in the envelope and then never ever ever gonna see the light of day again so let's start with a nice 360 degree view of doyle 2.0 what makes this figure really cool is that it's based off an actual Triceratops specimen, a very famous one at that. It's based off American Museum Natural History specimen number 5116, which is probably one of the more famous skeletons in the American Museum. You know, back in the day, American Museum of Natural History was the place to see dinosaur skeletons. I visited that museum multiple times. I actually even saw it before they renovated uh, the main dinosaur halls. Like, I think it was like over... 20 years ago so the american museum triceratops mount is very iconic so it's really cool to get a model of that figure and the weirdest thing about that uh mount that it really doesn't look like a typical triceratops hordus back in the day it used to be uh classified as triceratops a lattice but it eventually got rolled into the species hordus there's only two valid species now hordus and process so I do like this figure. It's just, it's just such a weird, weird looking Triceratops. I think somewhere down the line, the specimen needs to be uh, re-examined. That it might end up being a different species of Triceratops or something completely different because it just has the weirdest Triceratops skull shape. If you look at uh, other Horridus uh, skulls, it just does not look like a classic Triceratops. But the sculpting and detailing on the body is really nice. You know, we have some really nice Triceratops skin impressions. Uh, the Lane skin impression is quite famous. You can see all those large scales all over the body. Uh, the color scheme is, you know, typical drab PNSO. It looks like a turd from a dog that ate way, way too much peanut butter. But I really love how the long horns came out on there. They have some nice uh, ridges on there. It looks like uh, growth rings. But uh, it's a cool looking triceratops model is my favorite definitely not all right let's just do a couple quick measurements on doyle this figure is nine inches long from the tip of the snout to the tip of the tail and just about four inches tall to the top of the frill so triceratops was one of the largest ceratopsians estimated between 25 and 30 feet long so i put this figure somewhere in that 133 to 140 scale range so if you collect 135 this is going to fit nicely in your collection 
So let's take a look at this little Triceratops skull replica that came with this figure. This is something new for PNSO, and I actually quite like this. Yeah, I know the museum line is expensive with those $60 price points, but I wish in the future more of the museum line figures came with a skull element. It just looks really, really nice. Uh, displayed next to the figure. Now this is a skull replica of the actual specimen, American Museum of Natural History, specimen 5116. And you can see they did a pretty nice job on here. The horns are made up of slightly flexible materials. So you don't have to worry about uh, breaking them. They are a little bit sharp. Um, there is a really light coat, like a wash over here to bring out some of the details like around the nasal region and around the eye socket. It's not the uh, it's not a super high quality uh, skull replica, but it is nice to have something like this as a companion piece uh, to the model. And you can see it is actually in scale with the figure as my stupid hand is in the way. So let's uh, move him out right here and try to line this up. And you get to see how much longer those horns are with versus the, the horn cores on the skull so yeah pretty decent little uh, piece of plastic came in here i would really hope that they do uh more of these in the future i can definitely dig that i just love to actually have these uh displayed next to the figures so let's zoom and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure starting with the head first thing you notice this thing has insanely insanely long horns and that's probably my favorite part about this figure I just love those little growth rings at the base of the horns and they are made out of a flexible plastic so you don't have to worry about these breaking but you know if you're going to store this thing definitely put it in the box because I can see these warping all the time you just throw them like in the storage bin with other figures <clears throat> like I do you can see the eye is painted orange with a black pupil you got a lot of nice scale detail all over the face the nose horn is nice and short a little sharp looking the beak is nicely painted you know the color scheme there's really not too much to talk about like i said it just looks like it's just dog turd brown with a little bit of uh yellow mixed into it and then going down from the front you can see some large scales between those long brow horns and let's just zoom out a little bit you can see there is some very very fine scale detail on the frill you know up until a few years ago we didn't know if triceratops had scales on their frill some reconstructions you know more famously the uh beast of the mesozoic triceratops figures they have the uh frill uh sculpted with like a keratin sheath on it but like when you first take this out of the box it kind of looks like it has a keratin sheath because that scale detail is really really fine but you can see a lot of it around the edges right here you even got the bony knobs along the top of the frill they're kind of dull cuts like the way they are on the specimen they are painted a lighter brown color than the uh rest of the frill so but if you do look on the box the uh scale detail on the frill is much crisp crisper and well defined and it just seems like it's lost uh, during the molding process of this figure. So I kind of just wish that scale detail along the frill was much more defined. And then going down to the mouth, it has this really, really long mouth. It kind of gives the figure a goofy look. That's because it does have an articulated jaw and it is kind of tight because that lower beak tucks in pretty uh, tightly with the front beak. So I just have to pull it open. And there we go. You know, PNS are just going hard, hard in the paint uh, with that no lips and no uh, cheek look so yeah uh, it's 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 definitely something uh, I personally don't like it. I'm just used to seeing cheeks on ceratopsian figures and it just, just looks odd and weird to me you know maybe it's scientifically accurate that's fine but it still just looks really really weird you can see a little bit of like a cheek membrane in there and then looking inside the mouth you can see there are teeth sculpted in on the upper and lower jaws and it was just a flat pink in there which was a little bit more uh another wash in there to bring out some more of that mouth detail now remember how i was complaining about how the uh scales on the frill really weren't that well defined well let's turn around and look at the back the back of the frill looks absolutely horrendous looking i just it just looks unfinished you can see there's a little bit of dry brushing it brings up the scales actually on camera the scales look great. In hand, you can barely, barely see them. I just wish it was, it's just, there was like a better paint app on the back of, uh, back of the frill. It just looks unfinished compared to the rest of the body. I just wish there was a few more 
paint apps on there and then going down to the neck this is like where the best part of the figure is you have some really nice large scales painted in there you have some nice dry brushing to bring out all that beautiful scale uh definition like i said this is these scales are probably based on the lane specimen because there's you know, there's all large scales mixed in all over the body going down to the front legs front legs are nice and muscular and powerful looking lots of folds and wrinkles some more fine scale detail the toe claws are painted with a glossy brown paint and then turn the figure over you can see the underside there is a lot of large belly scales almost like a cream coat with a little bit of pink penis loves loves putting pink uh on the undersides of their figures here's the throat region right here and here's the underside of the skull and even the bottoms of the feet have some nice scale detail on them and then going down to the main body you can see some more of those large scales with those little uh dimples in the middle of the bigger ones which is accurate to the lane specimen going down to the hind legs big thick powerful thighs and speaking of thighs look at the width of the hips on this figure that is one chunky looking triceratops and going down to the hind legs some more folds and wrinkles with a nice scale detail the scale detail on this figure is absolutely great it just feels great in hand and it's just really well painted to bring out all the details i just wish it was a little bit more vibrant than uh this turd brown color and you know speaking of turd brown with some glossy brown paint on the back toenails and then we have a nice short tail right here so you know it's a pretty decent triceratops figure like i i like it because it's based off the American Museum of Natural History mount. And you can see it's even sculpted in the same position as a mount. Yeah, they changed, they made the legs a little bit more upright and they raised the tail to make it look more accurate. Never understood when the American Museum did that big renovation, why they didn't remount their uh, Edmontosaurs and the Triceratops. Yeah, they changed around the uh, Patasaurus and T-Rex, but they still left those other ones in the old school poses. It's just kind of blew my mind that they spent all that money changing the halls around they didn't like bother touching those specimens and i do like how you can display the skull next to it they have a pretty cool touch i'm gonna have to build some kind of base to have it mounted next to it like this so it looks better on the shelf all right moving on with comparisons first up here it is with the first version of doyle and it is vastly vastly different figures and you can see doyle has the more classic looking triceratops horridus uh, skull shape which i much prefer i you know this is one of their older figures and i still like it a little little bit more than this one uh you can still even see the, this one has uh quills on it but i just like the much more active looking pose on doyle version one and it has a little, little bit more vibrant paint scheme i know some people are probably going to complain that i'm crazy for liking this one but hey i like what i like and next up here is another PNSO Triceratops. Here is their large hollow vinyl figure. And you can see it has a classic Triceratops skull, which just, you know, we keep comparing this to, you know, most other Triceratops figures. It just looks really weird because I seriously think that the specimen needs to be checked over. I know a lot of the frill is reconstructed in a plaster and who knows this thing might just end up being a completely different species or maybe it's just a very very mature form of triceratops and let's keep doing more triceratops figures because every company has at least one most have multiples here it is with safari limited's version and here it is with beast of the mesozoic subadult triceratops you can see how the beast of the mesozoic one the frill is sculpted with that carrot and sheet look but still retains that classic triceratops look and let's bring out the big boy the adult beast of the mesozoic triceratops which makes everything next to it look incredibly small and i almost forgot to do this comparison here it is with eofauna's triceratops another figure sculpted with unusually long horns and let's take out some pnso figures here it is with their Parasaurolophus. And let's do some Hell Creek species. Here it is with their Ankylosaurus. And here it is with their Pachycephalosaurus. And I think all three of these look really great next to each other. They pretty much saw it scale pretty well um, together. And I'd love to see more Hell Creek species. I, you know, they keep teasing it. I think we're gonna get an Edmontosaurus uh, very soon from PNSO. 
And lastly, this is the comparison everyone wants to see. Here it is with Wilson, and it's really cool to have both these figures next to each other because Wilson's also based off the American Museum of Natural History specimen of T-Rex. So you have two iconic dinosaur specimens now in figure form and you can display them together on your shelf and that is the big drawing point of this new Doyle and that's the main reason why I picked it up to have them displayed next to Wilson way back in the day before they renovated the halls these two were next to each other I think for decades on end until they switched things around in the 90s now they're in uh, separate halls so it's nice to reunite these two again so final thoughts on this new Triceratops I like it a lot. It's definitely not my favorite Triceratops figure. Um, you know, it's really, really cool to have this based on the American Museum of Natural History specimen. Like I keep saying, it's an iconic Triceratops mount, and now we have a figure of it. So that's the big drawing point for this figure for me. And I do like the skull replica that it came with. I think that's a pretty cool addition. Much better than the folded in half posters that you get a million of in all these new museum line releases. I much rather have like some kind of scale, uh, skeletal element that comes with these dinosaur museum figures just to slightly slightly justify that $60 price point that keeps killing us a little bit slowly inside every time one's released the color scheme is pretty drab but i have to say you know the paint apps are well done on it i do like all that nice dark brown dry brush and it really makes all that scale detail pop uh the scale details on the front of the frill and the back of the frill uh really need to be a lot crisper like i said it's much nicer looking on the packaging but that's pretty typical for pns so their prototypes always look great versus their in hand uh figures and the horns are pretty cool i just love all those uh growth rings at the base that's a pretty unique touch so it's really going to come down to your personal taste if you want to pick up this figure there are better triceratops figures out there you know this one's just really unique looking i can see that being a big draw for a lot of people and you know if you're a fan of the american museum of natural history you're going to pick this up but uh you know th there's a lot of options when it comes to triceratops it's a very very popular species so there is a absolute ton of figures to pick from now, like I said at the beginning of the review, I ended up getting this figure from PNSO's AliExpress store. I'll leave a link to that down below in the description. So that'll do it for the review. Uh, I really don't have too much new stuff to review in the next couple weeks, uh, but PNSO seems like they'd be releasing figures uh, weekly again. So, you know, I guess there'll be a lot of new PNSO reviews on the channel going forward. Uh, that new Central Source that they just uh, showing off looks really, really great. Can't wait to get my hands on that. So be on the lookout for that review in a couple weeks. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously, and it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.